Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some pretty, pretty intriguing news when it comes to some really big sales numbers, kind of the big, you know, the console fight back and forth to go and see who's actually truly winning. We actually have some pretty big analytical numbers. We have some overall estimates on everything that's going on for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X sales. And overall, it's kind of somewhat surprising numbers too as well on just how kind of, in my honest opinion, one-sided everything is. Now, of course, once again, I'm always kind of a big, like, I'm in the middle, middle. you know, I can, I can like Xbox, I like PlayStation, I like the Switch and all that good stuff, but it's always intriguing to go and see the actual rough numbers, although they may be estimates, just to kind of see like what's going on, how the actual environment and gaming like ecosystem's kind of going, and all that type of good stuff. So we have a lot of stuff to go talk about, ramble into, and kind of talk about in general, so make sure you guys are subscribed, with the notifications on, as well for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway, Amazon links down below for the PS5 disc, digital console controller, Samsung SSDs are down below too as well, we also do have the Twitter and Twitch stream, if you guys would like to go follow up on either or, I'll definitely go and check it out uh horizon 2 as well up on twitch and also the weeble sign up for weeble deposit one dollars get a bunch of free stock free money some of that coinbase too as well always link down below let's go and dive in the video itself and obviously if you guys want to go chime in your thoughts on this feel free to so as you guys know the big sales thing is always the big thing you know the first month the first six months the first year and whatever we're at at this point and the random insert monthly denomination but when it comes to all this stuff it's always intriguing to go and see because it does kind of seem like everything's favoring and kind of pushing a lot towards the playstation 5 both production number wise in terms of also sale unit wise and also kind of a lot of the hype factor especially as of today with horizon and all that good news shining on in with it but the one big thing is the Xbox is still doing phenomenally well, and as you guys know, they always try to push more on the Xbox Game Pass. But looking at numbers, the numbers are a little bit more intriguing than just that. So we actually have an article over here from the Video Game Chronicle diving on into the big deep sales of the PlayStation 5 sales could at this point could literally be over double the amount of the Xbox Series X and S as research firms are estimating. And we also had some uh, also official numbers in terms of like Sony themselves, in terms of Xbox themselves. But at the end of the day, funny enough, the overall numbers of Xbox Game Pass numbers are actually higher than all the total sales of the PlayStation 5. And in all honesty, if the, we've had a good past few months for Game Pass, maybe also the Xbox combined. So at the end of the day, everyone's kind of winning. So and for, uh, and for analysis estimates that between those uh, for Xbox Series X and uh, Xbox, I messed up the sentence a bit. And for analysis estimates, Xbox Series X and S sales hit to 10 million by the end of 2021, which in all honesty kind of would make sense. But as well, as you guys know, we're trying to go push for 15 million PlayStation 5 consoles, even after a reduction for this upcoming fiscal year, the one that we're currently in right now, let alone all the sales that happened beforehand, where they were actually outpacing the PlayStation 4, at least for the first few months. So PlayStation 5 sales to consumers at that point, around 1.7 times greater than the Xbox Series X and S sales as of the end of 2021, according to data from analytics firm and fear analysis. So earlier this month, Sony has actually said it shipped 17.3 million consoles to retailers by the end of December. So if you guys know that, that's just basically just a huge life cycle, plus the first, like, you know, a few weeks of the initial Cyber Monday. This is back, like, when it first launched in 2020. So just, it's been a lot of consoles since then. And Amphor Researcher Director Pierce Harding Rolls thinks almost all these units made their way into consumers' hands last year, which is funny because a lot of them also went to scalpers, but at the end of the day, I'm sure you guys know, it's kind of just like a like an up and down where basically scalpers get it and then they obviously want to resell it. So I would say it probably would end up in a lot of consumers' hands. Sony ended 2021 with PS5 cumulative sell through reaching 17.1 million units. And at that point, around 1.7 times or pretty much almost double the performance of the Xbox Series X and S's combined, you know, the double whammy. As analysis said in the research note this week, at this early stage of global sales momentum is with Sony, which would kind of make a lot of sense. We are still seeing restocks floating around pretty much everywhere. Although these past few weeks have been a little bit more on the drier side from all the various retailers. We also don't forget we're also seeing restocks happening a lot in the UK. I know UK has been getting a lot of consoles and restocks and everything. Same with also Canada too as well. And also we kind of see the various pop-ups for Australia, Japan, Russia, China, et cetera, et cetera. And while Xbox is still more primarily focused on the U.S. markets, it kind of goes and hampers the overall global sales quite a bit. So at this early stage, the global sales momentum is with Sony, but it will be frustrated that its potential has been undermined by product availability, which I'm sure you guys all usually know. It's all semiconductors, supply chains, basically ship and cargo ships being completely on lockdown and kind of lost, et cetera, et cetera. You guys have probably heard it a bajillion different times. 
Although the Xbox Series X and S systems continue to sell faster than any other previous generation of Microsoft consoles, according to Phil Spencer, the head honcho. That's why I always kind of go and say these types of things where, while it does seem better as like a clickbait title and clickbait thumbnail, whatever, that the PlayStation 5 is like destroying the Xbox or whatever it is, at the end of the day, Xbox is doing phenomenal because at the end of the day, it's also kind of like your own competition too as well. So for them, they are beating previous Xbox consoles. And as well as we mentioned all the time, Xbox Game Pass is a phenomenal success, both on PC and also on obviously Xbox. So while it is kind of still losing towards the PlayStation 5, it still has its nice extra merits and also has good reasons for people to buy the consoles. Although, especially right now, and probably especially these next few weeks, I am very gung-ho on the PlayStation 5 with Horizon, Elden Ring, and honestly, like, Forspoken, and a few other various PS5 games. Seafood 2 as well, which was phenomenal. So, you I mean, I gotta be a little bit biased, at least for these past few weeks. And if I really had to pick a console, I'm still always leaning toward the PlayStation. But I'm also a PC gamer too, so it kind of makes sense. Although, I'll, I'll, however, unlikely, its competitors, Microsoft doesn't publicly disclose Xbox hardware shipment figures with its quarterly financial results, which I kind of wish they would, because it'd be a lot easier for us to dive on into this. But in terms of analytical stuff and like basically what we've seen around and what people mentioned, we slowly do get those numbers. Although previously Nico Partners Senior Analysis Daniel Ahmed estimated that Xbox Series X and S shipments topped 12 million by the end of 2021, but Harding Rolls believes the platform is actually sold to consumers install base was significantly actually lower. So we actually covered that news when it first came out, and we were kind of assuming that was actually really good, and it really was good numbers. But it now it kind of seems like people are more pushing towards a little bit more conservative number base, and I think that would make a lot of sense with both the Switch, Apple, Samsung, PS5, Sony, all essentially saying that the supply chain's a lot harder, and we have to keep on lowering our estimated numbers, because, well, it's just hard to get these chips, it's hard for production, factories are all over the place, and it's hard. So, I mean, if, even if, like, PlayStation 5 that was making more is actually having big production issues, you'd probably assume that it'd be on the same boat for the Xbox, and same thing too as well with Nintendo Switch, which is also having issues too as well. So basically, Microsoft ended 2021 with its Xbox Series family devices reaching cumulatively sell-through of 10.3 million units. He estimated it was on par with the previous generation Xbox One cycle. So I'm a kind of a big fan of the growth of gaming, as long as gaming as a whole is doing well, as long as gaming as a whole is selling more units, and as all on top of that, as long as games are not being sold to us like Battlefield 2042, I'm usually kind of pretty happy with the overall life cycle of games and gaming availability. I think it's kind of nice and cool. So for this one, Harding Rolls said substantial Xbox Series X shortages last year were partially offset by the greater availability of the Xbox Series S. We just actually had a chance to go cover that too, because in certain big instances such as the Black Friday, it was actually the number one best-selling next-gen console, even compared to the PlayStation, PlayStation Digital, Switch, and everything else. So while the Xbox Series X has not been doing as as big, they are definitely getting a lot more focus in the Xbox Series S, and on top of that too with the Xbox Game Pass, it just makes a lot of sense because it's getting a lot more focus on digital only, as well as also getting a lot more focus on the Xbox ecosystem, and also a lot more people on Xbox Game Pass, and although the Xbox Series S is not the pinnacle of consoles, it's still good usable for younger kids, people in college, or just anyone who just wants to have a casual console, maybe in their bedroom, or all that type of stuff. So, as well, it also definitely goes and shows, and I would probably agree on this, and I almost want to go and dedicate a full video into it. The Xbox Series S is actually ahead of the Xbox Series X, and with the overall general availability and how many folks are able to go easily get it, and the surprising number of folks that actually do have one laying around is kind of surprising. So if you guys want to look at the very, very overall console install base, which I believe is just the overall total sales, we're looking at the Switch, which would make sense as it's like a 10-year-old console. Well, it's not that, but it feels like it. 99.7 million, which would be very close to the 100 million, which I think did recently happen as of, well, recently. We had a big, like, kind of celebration with it. So these are kind of slightly on the lower side. I mean, like, imagine there's a restock yesterday or even, say, for today with Xbox, with Game, um, GameStop. Technically, that would be an actually, you know, a few hundred thousand on top of that. But we also can see that PlayStation's at 17.1, and then the Xbox Series X is around 10, which would make sense. So it does kind of seem like the PlayStation is absolutely, I don't want to say crushing it, but they're doing very, very good in the focus of console sales. At this point, especially if you maybe if we have another good next maybe two or three months of big restocks, think like all the big retailers as well, Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, etc. If all of them went in really, really big these next two or three months, I can one zillion percent go and see the PlayStation hitting those double numbers. And this point is pretty much at that because Xbox numbers are expected to be lower than we're probably assuming. So this is actually kind of really cool to go and see how everything's been going on. 
Uh, Harding Rolls also recently expect, uh, said he expects the PS5 to outsell the consoles as well. 2 to one as of the end of this year. And he has forecast 18 million sales for consoles in 2020 and 9 million for Microsoft systems. Although it's kind of weird though, because all these big official numbers such as Sony said they want to go push for a 15 and obviously they can make more, they will. And same with the Switch also want to low tone down their numbers too on top of that. So it's very, very intriguing to kind of go and see these estimations and also the overall numbers. So I kind of want to hear your thoughts down below. I think it's very intriguing to see on how well the Xbox Series S is doing. It's always very nice to see how good general gaming is doing as a whole. And obviously with PlayStation, they're just selling like hotcakes still. So give me your thoughts and comments down below, as well as make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on, as well for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway. Amazon links down below for the PS5 disc, digital console controller, Samsung SSD is currently still on sale down below, Twitter and Twitter if you guys would like to go and follow and sign up for that Weeble, sign up for that Coinbase down below. And I'll see you guys later on throughout today for a bunch more videos. Love you guys.